Excited to start making some videos that where you're probably going to care about. So this week we're going to talk about this generator I bought, which is a 2500 watt inverter generator. It's a dual fuel, so it takes gas and propane. It's made by Champion. So we got a pretty robust solar system and batteries, but we were headed to Texas to do some solar installs uh, a couple weeks ago. And if you need air conditioning for eight hours a day, our solar system won't quite keep up with that. So. So I was able to buy a little bit smaller generator because of the fact we can boost with our batteries, which I'll kind of show you how that works throughout this video. So, well, I'm like all our dogs here, we got Gracie and Coda. So, so my plan is to only run this off in propane. We have propane with us all the time. We don't really carry gasoline around, so I figured why start carrying gas and have the back of the truck smell and stuff? It's all that gas when they make options to run off in propane. So. That's kind of why I lean to buying this one. Uh, we ordered this off in walmart.com actually. It was the best price I could find. It was just over 600 bucks, I guess, $650 maybe. I don't remember exactly. But So I'll show you how to hook it up to propane. I mean, there was really no setup for this. All you had to do was put the oil in it. And this is the propane line. Come with this handy little clip to hook the hose you had to screw this on but other than that the thing came completely assembled all you had to do was take it out of the box so so i'll show you where the oil goes and um, then i'll show you how we hook this up so to put the oil on this all you got to do is turn these two latches here and this cover will pop off so they send you the oil and they send you this funnel which makes it nice and easy to put that in there and the oil they send you is a of the exact amount of oil that you need to fill this properly. I mean, it says to fill it till the oil starts touching one or two threads of this dip, dip stick there. So this generator has a five hour breaking period. So that oil they send you after five or six hours of running this, you really need to drain that and change it because it's going to have all the little metal shavings from the engine and stuff. So it just takes like 10W30 or, you know, depending on what kind of temperature you're in, you might want to adjust that a little bit to 5W30 or something. So. So that's basically it for putting the oil in. This is your propane line. It's got this nice cover to keep on there to keep the dirt and stuff out of there. So it's got this little peg here. You gotta line that up properly, get it to snap in there. So, so if it's not going in, it's because it's not lined up in that hole. But it will just click in there like that. So then you just take this in, connect it to your propane tank, make sure you get it good and tight. You know, certainly they recommend you to check it with a soapy water mixture, but nobody really does that i don't ever really do that but it would be the right thing to do but then you can just turn your propane tank on i'll come over here this is the knob that you use to select so there's green here that would be propane red would be if you're gonna run it off in gas and this black is choke so no matter whether you're using propane or gas you got to put it on the black to choke it which you always have to do if you're starting it for the first time of the day and the engine's cold so it says to pull the cord slow a couple times just to get the gas from the, from the propane down the line. So then you can just pull the cord. Now once it fires, you should be able to turn it over here on the green. It start this way. So obviously you want to let it warm up, but I'm just going to shut it down so you guys can hear me because I doubt you can hear me over the, over the camera. So. So this has only got two 15 amp plugs. I mean, certainly they make generators that have a 30 amp plug, which would be more for an RV, but seems though this is a smaller generator, we're just using an adapter. Our RV is a 30 amp RV, so you can use this adapter to, to plug it into the 15 amp plug. So we got our 30 amp uh, cord here and then our adapter to be able to plug it into the 15 amp socket. So whenever we, I go to plug this in, I want to make sure this is running and warmed up before I go and hook this up. And then ultimately, before I shut the generator down, I un unplug the load and let it run for at least a few seconds before I shut it down. Not a requirement, but it's a good habit to get into. We got these two, two plugs here in the front. That's actually to hook two of these generators together in parallel. So two 2,500 watt generators in parallel would be 5,000 watt generator. 
sometimes a little easier to deal with than you know one big generator because these are a little easier to move around got a couple of usb plugins over here um, we don't use those a whole lot but they are there um, this is your ground plug-in i don't really use that that's meant to like put a ground ground rod into the um into the ground they actually have this grounded properly if you try to use this with a you know, like a surge protector that you plug in it's going to show that there's an open ground i mean they do make a plug that you can ground the ground and neutral together but i don't know a whole lot about those yet so i don't want to necessarily recommend that but that option is out there uh, just to let you guys know when we bought this generator the second time we went to use it the recoil did break on us like the cord didn't break but there's some teeth in the inside here so when you pull it out the teeth come out and that's what you know catches the engine to turn the engine over so don't be champion too much up over that you know it just was a bad recoil it wasn't necessarily their fault they were real good about us they sent us one right away i was able to change it myself but it was a little bit of a pain about to get to one of the bolts but they certainly would have paid for me to take it to a shop so they were certainly good about it so the odds of that happening to anybody else is probably pretty slim it was just a bad recoil so so that's basically it on um, the end of this video i'm going to kind of show our um, assist feature with our victron inverter charger so i left that till the end because some of you guys aren't going to care about that because it's not going to apply to some of you so so whatever uh certainly uh reach out with any questions you guys might have and uh I'd certainly like for you guys to like this video and subscribe so thanks a lot guys all right guys this part of the video like i said just gonna kind of apply to people who have <clears throat> like the multi plus inverter charger by victron uh this generator would be you know a little small to run this rv if we didn't have this system i mean it's a 2500 watt generator but on gas it's only 1850 running watts and propane is even a little less 1650 running watts so if you tried to run this whole 30 amp rv off of that and you had some of the big drawing appliances like an AC and water heater drawn at once, it would be too much for this generator. So, so I'm gonna show you how it kind of works for us with the assist feature that this uh, inverter charger has. Screen goes black on me. So you can see right now it's an absorption charge just because my batteries are completely full. It's nice and sunny here today. So my solar system's kept my batteries full. So you can see AC in is 547 watts. That's what it's drawn from the generator. AC out is 279 because the refrigerator is running right now. You can see right here, this 15 amps, that's where you can set what you draw from your generator or it'd be the same thing for shore power. So I got it set at 15 right now because that's kind of the max what this generator can do. But if we step it down to say 10, you'll hear the generator probably change a little bit. You know, I guess not because it's already kind of idled down some. So you can see it's still an absorption charge, but if I kick the air conditioning on, you should see it change here. See, it just switched to assisting when the compressor kicked on. So AC in, we got a thousand watts coming in from the generator, but out, we got 1500 going out. So it's pulling 500 watts from our battery. But so, so it's a super nice feature. I mean, it happens so quick. I mean, the inverter charger does all the thinking for you. I mean, the AC doesn't even know that it's pulling power from the battery. So it's super nice. Hey everybody, so I want to jump in here at the end and talk about something that I didn't mention in the video and that's uh, to make sure you're careful with the exhaust fumes from this generator or any generator for that matter. I mean, try to keep them as far away from the RV as possible this year in Michigan at the Faster Horses. Music festival, they found four guys inside an RV unresponsive. Two of them died. Two of them are in critical condition, the last that I heard, and they determined it to be from the exhaust fumes from the generator. So certainly a super sad story that we don't want to repeat. So so just keep that in mind. Other than that, we love this generator. You know, I really like champion products. You know, I mean we had the little recoil problem, but again that wasn't that big of a deal and I that's a very isolated incident. So so I would certainly look into Champion. You know, they're a little cheaper than Honda, um, but they certainly seem to work just as well. So reach out with any questions you guys may have. I'd love to get your comments. Uh, certainly like and subscribe, and we will catch you guys next week. Thanks a lot.